Hello there. Um, yes, we're all still in lockdown and I thought I would have another little project of uh, 10 of my favourite Shakespeare plays, my favourite moments in Shakespeare plays, my favourite performances in Shakespeare plays, my reminiscences of seeing Shakespeare plays. And um, yeah, Beethoven, Shakespeare. We're not talking minor league here. I do occasionally read, listen to... Um, enjoy lesser elevated artists than than these, um, but I'm a great lover of Beethoven. I'm a great lover of Shakespeare. I'm not going to apologise for that. So, right, the first play I want to talk about is I, I think for years it was it's been an underrated play by Shakespeare. Um, and the, well, first of all, I'll tell you the play is Coriolanus. And you read about it and a few people say, oh, the lead character is incredibly unlikable and the, the, he's incredibly selfish, incredibly pig-headed and rude and arrogant and violent. And, and um, of course, that's what makes it a great play. Um, they say he's very one-dimensional uh, without realizing that that is the point of the play, that he is one-dimensional. You know, you can have a one-dimensional character in a play if you mean him to be, if he's, if you're trying to make him three-dimensional and he's one-dimensional, then that's a bit of a disaster. But um, Coriolanus is a definite person that we recognise today, and Shakespeare knew exactly what he was doing by writing this play and portraying this character. Um, a brief uh, history of the plot is that he is say uh, it's in Roman times. He's a very successful fighting machine who has won many battles, especially against the Volsces, who are the enemies of Rome. And um, he is much lauded as a war hero. But like uh, a lot of war heroes, he, they wanted to enter politics and take his place in the Senate. And in order to do that, he has to get votes. And in order to get votes, he has to talk to normal human beings. And he can't play that game at all. He basically thinks that anybody who isn't him is not worth the dirt under his shoe. And the very personality that makes him this great, fearless war hero, um, I'm, I'm watching a documentary about Michael Jordan, the Netflix one at the moment, it's quite similar in a way. The, the, you know, the very characteristics that make him win all the time uh, can lead to character flaws when it comes to dealing with people. Um, so he can't balance those two sides for himself and he, as soon as he gets faced with members of the public he sort of puts on a grim, uh, uh, I'm talking about Coriolanus now, not Michael Jordan, he puts on a little fake smile and then within about three lines he starts shouting at them and calling them curs and worse than senseless things and blocks and all this sort of thing and then they all start shouting back at him so it's a disaster. This all gets totally out of hand in the Senate when he starts yelling at the senators as well and they banish him. So I'm going to just play you this little bit from the Rafe Fiennes, 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 Fiennes film, which is fantastic by the way and set in sort of modern war-torn Middle East uh, of that very scene uh, where the, basically everybody's shouting, 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 I mean we can't take you anymore, we can't take your big head, we can't take your arrogance and it builds and builds and builds and then he just comes back shouting and uh and I'll, I'll just play you a little bit of it now I'll leave it at that. I, I actually hope I got the screen in there because I can see this is really technologically advanced, not. Um, so he comes out with those three lines. It's the end of his speech where he just says, why don't you all just shut up? Where were you when these battles were being made? Where were you? You didn't risk your lives. You didn't risk anything. All you do is sit here and criticize and sh put me down and argue, dare to disagree with me. How dare you? You weren't there on the battlefield. And because they've just basically banished him for his arrogance, I forgot to mention that, 
the senator ordered him to be banished for his arrogance, he comes out with these great three words, which after all this kind of slightly dense language, because Coriolanus, like all um, Shakespearean major characters, sorry, my phone is slipping down and having technical problems here, like uh, um, all Shakespeare's, uh, like all Shakespeare's main characters, especially there's a class thing, especially these upper class characters, they speak in this dense poetry, which is not easy to take, listen to when you first hear it, but gives, 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 gives. It's like poetry. It gives more, the more you hear it. Um, and so after all that speech, pause, he says, I banish you. <laughs> the height of arrogance. It's like, it's like when you're dumped and you go, well, I, I, I know what you're dumping me for because I was going to dump you anyway. So actually I'm dumping you, really. So he banishes them. He walks out and then they, then they stop and they go, oh, right, right. Okay, this guy's a bit of a loose cannon. We thought at this stage he would apologize and back down, but he hasn't backed down. And he continues his speech and he walks out on them with a chilling exit line. He turns around to them and says, there is a world elsewhere, and walked out, and they know exactly what that means. They should really just arrest him and kill him right there, but they don't, they let him go. And then they realize afterwards, their worst fears have been realized, he joins the other side. Because, but to him, it's not really about fighting for a side, he is a fighting machine. He, and if they don't need him, someone else will need him. So he gets together with the enemy, and then they come back, uh, a very tentative relationship with the enemy because uh, of course they don't really like each other he's killed half of them so <laughs> they're very glad to have him on their side but they're like this guy literally killed half of us so you know we're not going to be really bosom buddies and he's prepared to go back and destroy Rome and that includes his mother his wife and his son now Coriolanus's mother is one of the great roles in Shakespeare great female roles in Shakespeare she is like the power mom from hell. Um, I don't know if you saw the recent film, The Manchurian Candidate with Meryl Streep, or the, which was a remake of one with Angela Lansbury, with the, the, the politician's mother who would just do anything for her son to succeed and will push him forward, bigging him up. You are the best, you are the best. She's that character. And, you know, and again, Shakespeare identifies this character that we recognize today. She would rather he died. She would rather he died on the battlefield than back down in anything. And she's brought him up that way. But now she realizes it's all gone horribly wrong. So they set off the mother, the daughter, and the son to plead for Coriolanus to not destroy them and kill them all and, and to back down. Uh, and then we get one of the greatest scenes in all of Shakespeare. And I think I might have to pause for a second, but no, let's see how on my technical. Hello, yes, I'm back. Um, had a few technical difficulties there. Um, the clip from the film Coriolanus mm. is very quiet. And um, uh, I think the, the, it's on YouTube, so I think that um, the playback is recorded quite quiet. But because it's a film, Vanessa Redgrave speaks quite quietly um, in a way that she wouldn't do on stage. And she goes right up to him and whispers in his ear. And so you can't really hear what she's saying. So long story short, I thought about it, I looked at YouTube, I saw there's not really another clip of that scene that isn't done by some students somewhere, which I'm not dissing them, but um, you know. Uh, so this is the compromise. I've got down off the shelf my complete Shakespeare, which has been by my side for many a time. It's my second complete Shakespeare since I, uh, since I started getting into it. Um, so I'm just going to read you the passage. I'm a little bit rusty. I don't really do any performing that doesn't involve a tune these days. But um, I'm going to go for the point. So what's happened is um, Volumnia, who's Coriolanus' mother, has gone over to uh, the Volscians, who are the um, enemies of Rome, to plead Coriolanus to give up and come back and not to sack Rome and kill them all. And she's taken the son and the wife. And um, basically, this is towards the end of a quite a long speech where she pleads with him uh, quite emotionally. And towards the end of the speech, she gets more and more manipulative, amazingly manipulative. 
and she does the one thing which is going to crack him. She kneels down and, and demands that her, her, the wife and the son kneel down too. So this is just before she does that and he's just standing there looking away not showing any emotion, not paying any attention to her, just waiting for her to go away. He's surrounded by the Volskians, he's surrounded by the enemies that he's joined. And they're watching him like a hawk, obviously. So, she says, He turns away. Down, ladies. That's a bit unfair on the sun. Down, ladies. Let us shame him with our knees. To his surname Coriolanus longs more pride than pity to our prayers. Down. An end. This is the last. So, we will home to Rome and die among our neighbours. And then she gets the boy. More manipulation. Nay, behold this boy that cannot tell what he would have, but kneels and holds up hands for fellowship. Does reason our petition with more strength than thou hast to deny it. Come, let us go. This fellow had a Volsian to his mother. His wife is in Coriolai, and his child like him by chance. <laughs> it's quite bitchy. Yet give us our dispatch. I am hushed until our city be afire, and then I'll speak a little. And then she goes to leave. And then all eyes on Coriolanus, and he's starting to cry, and he's cracking and the sight of his mother on her knees pleading, this grand um, matriarch has finally got him. And he replies, takes her by the hand, picks her up. Oh, mother, mother, what have you done? Behold, the heavens do ope, the gods look down, and this unnatural scene they laugh at. Oh, my mother, mother, Oh, you have won a happy victory to Rome. So she reacts then because she knows she's done it. But for your son, him, believe it, oh, believe it. Most dangerously you have with him prevailed. And what Coriolanus is saying there is, yes, I'm not going to sack Rome. You've won, you've done it by your manipulation. You did the only thing, you are the only person, the only thing in this world that could get me to stop. And it worked. But you do know you've signed my death warrant because they're not going to let me walk away from this. And um, yes, and so they all gather around. Um, you know, he, he sort of feebly tries to talk to the Volskins and say, guys, come on, it's your mum. You would do that if it was your mum, wouldn't you? Come on. Of course, they're not having that. They don't like him anyway. He killed half of them. So by this stage, nobody likes him. The Romans don't like him. The Volskins don't like him. And... They kill him. They execute him. So it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy of big-headedness. It's a tragedy of thinking that strength, pure bodily strength, is enough without the the um, the ability to reason and the ability to use it sensibly. Um, you know, there's this phrase that the, uh, the Darwinists, well, I'm a Darwinist, of course, but, you know, in the animal world, they talk about survival of the fittest. And we're supposed to be included of that. But we have the ability to um, overcome that with our brains. And um, that's what makes us so successful. So I say it's not survival of the fittest, strongest, the more violent, angriest. It's survival of the smartest, and it always has been when it comes to humans. And a lot of the animal kingdom as well. So, you know, I think a, uh, I think a Tyrannosaurus would probably be a cockroach in a fight. But, um, you know... Look who's still here. Anyway, that's a huge digression and a little insight into my brain. Back to Coriolanus. Um, I just want to talk about another actor who has always been a hero of mine. Um, and he was a very famous Coriolanus at the Royal Shakespeare Company, and that's Alan Howard. And he, uh, thankfully, his entire performance of Coriolanus, it was preserved by the BBC in, in the late 70s, early 80s, I think early 80s. Uh, because uh, the BBC filmed all the Shakespeare's and, and they cast him as Coriolanus. It's not a naturalistic pr performance. It's not a TV performance. Um, his voice is incredible. He speaks like that. He's got a kind of sneer in his nose and the diction is incredible. And you might think, oh God, 
whatever. But um, there's, to me, there's a big difference between being natural and being real. You know, there's nothing more unnatural than a running kitchen with a tap on stage because the audience is sitting there thinking, well, I know I'm not in a kitchen. I know that's not real. You know, you can't convince me I'm in a real kitchen. I know I'm going to have to use my imagination here. I'm prepared to do that. So, um, yes, he's not naturalistic, but he is real. And Coriolanus is an otherworldly character anyway, and it's just a joy to hear him speak this language and yeah, in that way that he does. And a very unsung actor, dominated the RSC for a couple of years, played all the major roles, made hardly any films, no films from what I know, but was one of the great actors, kind of unsung actors. And so if you can track any clips or indeed the whole thing of his Coriolanus, it is available on DVD, I recommend it. And uh, I was trying to find a bit to play, but it's only a tiny bit on YouTube. I have got the whole DVD, but you know, I just kind of think if I film my DVD and put it on YouTube, somebody might sue me. Don't want to do that. Anyway, look, I'm rambling on too much. I'll make these shorter. Um, it'll be far less preamble. I, you know, if I choose Hamlet, not saying I will, I'm not going to spend 10 minutes telling you what it's about. So, um, okay, hope you enjoyed. That's Coriolanus. Um, watch the Ray Fiennes film. And if you've not seen it before, and uh, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.